Recently, a friend asked me to build a slide trumpet. For the next few weeks, I'm going to build the slide trumpet and I will show you how I do it. Before I get started though, there's something I need to finish from the Herald Trumpet Restoration series. Next Friday, I'm going to start the next overhaul project, and also as soon as I can, I'm going to have a good trumpet player play this trumpet. My friend had this slide section off a very old and small bore trombone, so I'm going to use the slide as the slide section of the slide trumpet. I have an old con cornet that's in very poor condition. It's missing several pieces and it is very dented up, but I'm going to use the bell section on that and I'm also going to use the lead pipe. Before I start cutting tubing, I need to know how long to make the slide. There is a reason I'm using a cornet bell and not a trumpet bell on this, and that's because the cornet bell is much shorter than the trumpet bell. This slide needs to be made a certain length so that it can get out to 7th position, and it needs to be fairly long, at least for a trumpet, to get out that far. So, if I use the cornet bell, that I will have enough room to get out to the 7th position, but if I use a longer trumpet bell, I need to sacrifice some of the length of the slide to get the longer bell. I cannot sacrifice that much slide length, so I'm going to use a smaller bell on this instrument. Before I start cutting tubing, I need to figure out how long this slide needs to be. When you're playing trombone and you slide the slide out to 7th position, you're adding approximately half the length of the instrument to it again. That's the extra length of tubing that the air needs to go through to lower the pitch to where you want it to be for a seventh position. With a slide trumpet, you also need to add on about half of the length of the instrument to get it into the seventh position. When you play a trumpet and you do not push down any valves, that would be like being in the first position, which is the slide all the way in, and if you push down a second valve, they would add this much tubing to it, and that would be like being in the second position, and the first valve would be like being in a third position, and then a first and second would be a fourth, second and third would be fifth position, first and third would be sixth, and first, second, and third would be seventh position. What I'm going to do now is add up the lengths of the valve slide tubes and see how long I need to make the slide so that it can get out to the seventh position. I'm going to add up the length of tubing for the third valve slide, and that would be about, let's see, four and three quarters inches from here to here. So I would double that, nine and a half inches, plus the crook, which would be about three quarters of an inch times one half of pi. Plus there would be a little more tubing added on inside of the casing. So I'm going to take the valve out and figure out how much that would be. So when the valve is up, it's going through this one. When it's down, it's going through these two. So you would add these two together and then subtract it from this one. So it would be about approximately three quarters. That one is about a half. This is probably a little longer than a half. So you'd have to add on about another three quarters or so. So there's approximately a nine and a half inches plus about one and a quarter inches and then about three quarters. So add that all up and you have 1, 10, 11, 11 and a half inches, approximately. So if you push down the third valve, that adds about 11 and a half inches to the length of the tubing. And the first and second slides, they add up to as much as the third slide. If you're playing a trumpet and you push down the first and second valve, it's going to sound about the same as if you push down a third valve. 
So the length of the third slide equals approximately, not exact, but pretty close to the length of the first plus the second slide. So just double the length of the third slide. You have to add on 23 inches, which equals about 58 centimeters that you need to add onto the tubing to get into seventh position. Since the slide is doubled over on itself, you only need to pull out the slide half the length or 11 and a half inches to get into that seventh position on a slide trumpet. So I need to make sure that I have the 11 and a half inches plus some extra so that the slide does not fall out when you're playing it. Also on the other end, there needs to be some room for the cork barrel. A lot of these older trombones have a very small bore. This slide came from a very old trombone. I do not know the manufacturer and there's no serial number on it, so I do not know how old, but I'm guessing about 100 years old. And the way you check the bore is I have a tapered mandrel that I put in there. I, I put that up to there and I marked it with my finger where it is and then I'm going to take my micrometer and measure up to that point and let's see it looks like it's about 452 thousandths of an inch most trumpets have a bore size of around 459 to 460 so this is actually quite a small bore but it will still work I'm going to start by cleaning the slide. This is a very dirty slide and it does not work that well. So I'm going to put this in the chemicals and clean it up. I'm putting the slide in the chemicals. I'm going to leave it there for about 10 minutes. While the trombone soaks in the chemicals, I'm going to work on the cornet part of the instrument. This bell, it's a coprion bell, and it has like a copper collar. And that's because it has a higher copper content than regular brass. Because of the higher copper content, it gives it more of that rosy color, and a lot of people like this. And my friend who I'm making this for loves the rose brass bells, so I'm using that. And also it comes from a coronet that is missing a lot of parts and very damaged, so it's not really worth fixing the coronet. This belt does have a lot of dents in it, so I am going to get those dents out, but I'm going to do that before I remove the bell from the instrument. The reason why I'm taking the dents out before I remove the bell is because it's easier to hold on to and also when you get the dents out in the bell bow it can tend to spread the bow apart and it can make a mess out of that so I'm going to leave it attached and then when I get the dents out I'm going to unsolder the bell. This bell has a lot of dents in it. There's some dents in the bell flare and then there's some dents a little farther up there's a large one there and several along the way. And then there are also some in the bell bow all the way around to here. So pretty much every part of this bell has a dent in it. Because of that, there are a lot of different tools I'll need to get these dents out. I'm going to start with the rim. I'm going to start with a dent roller and I have that chucked into my vise. So that is ready to go. This dent roller works very well for dents from about here up to here on the coronet, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the creases on the bell rim. And I'm going to push that down with my hands as I'm rolling this. The roller touches the instrument in only one place, so I'm trying to keep the roller on where the crease is. I don't want to go down too far so that the roller touches it here, or up too far so it's here. So I want to keep the roller on where the crease is. And I'm pushing down, and I'm moving the trumpet up and down as needed so that it stays right on the crease. So I'm Pushing that out and just going around the bell. And there are plenty of dents on this. Okay, there's a dent that's a little bigger, so I'm going to push down a little harder to get that one out. Okay, it's coming out. You just want to get the dent out. You do not want to go farther than you need to because then you have to go in from the other side and get the dent out the second time the other direction and you'd rather not do that. Here are some dents that I can get out with this tool also. So I'm going to find where the dent roller is and roll those dents out. And when you do that it does chip off some of the lacquer. You can see that some of the lacquer came off. There's not a lot you can do about that other than re-lacquer the instrument. I'm going to need to turn the instrument around and get some of those dents out 
from the other direction too. There's another crease here, so I will get that one out. These dents are not that hard. It may look like I'm pushing hard, and I am mostly because it's right at the end of the bell, and there's not a lot of leverage, so you just have to get the dent out with the, your weight and not with any leverage. So, let's see, I think it's almost out. I'll touch it up a little bit. And even after I get the dents out, it's not going to be perfect because the metal stretches and some of the lacquer is coming off. And also there have been a lot of other dents in the past. I can tell that there were some dents right here that have been taken out in the past. All of those things make it so that this bell is not going to be in perfect condition when it's done unless I wanted to re-lacquer it. And I am not going to lacquer this. My friend may lacquer it when I'm done with it. I'm not sure, but I am not going to. Okay, I'm done with the roller, so I'm going to take that one out of the vise and get the next tool. The next tool is a short mandrel, and it's called a throat mandrel because it gets the throat of the trumpet bell. The throat of a bell is from about here to here, and that's usually where they put the logo on the instrument. Before I get the dents out with this tool, I'm going to go get the slide out of the chemicals. There's the slide. It does not look any better, but I'm going to clean it up now. This is a trombone slide brush, and I'm going to use that to clean out the inside of the slides. Let's see how much junk there was in the slides. Okay, quite a bit. I'm done cleaning the slide, so I'm going to use the throat mandrel now. And I'm not going to make you watch me get out all the dents. I know people like to see dents being removed on bells of instruments. Well, everywhere in an instrument, but bell especially. But there's still, <laughs> there are too many. It's going to take way too long, and you'd probably uh, surely be bored by the time I finish them all. So I'm going to finish getting the ones out with this mandrel, switch to the next mandrel which gets the next section of dents and I'll work my way down the bell till I'm at the end of the bell. I put the camera directly over some of these dents and I'll show you how to get some of these out. First of all you have to find where the mandrel is. You do that by going back and forth and looking for a little dot. You'll see a little dot where the mandrel is if you look into the light just right. I see that the mandrel is right about there, so I'm going to push the dent out and some lacquer is coming off underneath it. You try not to get the lacquer off when you get dents out of instruments, but sometimes the lacquer is old and it's kind of brittle and you get the dent out, it's going to just chip up. So that's what's happening here. It's probably not going to be the prettiest looking bell when I'm done with it, but my friend may re-lacquer this and if he does, then the lacquer really does not matter. Now I'm going to get the dents out around the bell bow, and I have this tool that I use, and I use it in conjunction with these dent balls. And I did a video on this a while back, so I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the video about how to remove dents on trumpet bell bows. You can watch that video if you want to learn more about how to do this. I'm just going to do that now, and when I'm done, I will show you what it looks like. I finished getting the dents out of the bell, so I'm ready to take the bell off of the cornet, but that is for the next video. Next Friday, I'm going to remove the bell from the instrument, and I'm also going to work on the lead pipe. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos. 